Good morning. It is Sunday, April the 11th, 2021, and Sarah and I are here for Sunday services at the North Fork of the Quinault River. It is a very frosty morning, crystal clear skies, lots of snow on the ridgetop still, and it's going to be a beautiful day. Uh, on the drive-in, there were tons of elk on the road. They were crossing right in front of us. You got to be careful so you don't cause a collision. And uh, it's just, it seems like it's going to be a really good day today to be out in Olympic National Park. It is an empty trailhead right now. There is no one here. We're probably going to have the valley to ourselves, at least going in, but you never know what you're going to run into. It's been 10 years since I was back at this trailhead ending a big trip with my friend Bruce Mendez. I'm anxious to see if the reality of the trail 10 years later matches what my memory. Our turnaround point hopefully will be a place called the Elip Creek Campground which is about 6.5 miles away upriver from this place, from this position here, which would make it roughly 13 mile day hike. Let's see what happens and here we go. Look at all the elk footprints down there. I imagine if you stay somewhere in this area, there's a good chance you might run into a good herd. Just up the trail, from the trailhead, get our first spectacular views of the inner peaks of the Olympics, covered with snow, and the open expanse of the North Fork. This is the beginning of what is forecasted to be a long stretch of good weather here in the Pacific Northwest. We have nothing but sunshine and 70 degree temperatures predicted for the next week. I expect these rivers to maybe get a little higher by next weekend. Seems like we picked a perfect day. Sunlight, glorious sunlight, is starting to fill our valley. More often than not, you come to these places in the Olympics where water has mass deposited boulders and scree and rubble all across the valley floor and it covers the trail and they change every year and so you just kind of have to pick through the boulder fields and uh, I just found the trail actually it's down there to the left and uh, you got to find it where it exits the rubble path and there it is, right there. Just noticed it. But you can see how high we are on the rock and how low that trail is down there below the valley, you know, where I'm standing.
this grove that we're walking through is just amazing. It has the rock cobbles on the bottom of the forest floor that have pretty much stopped all the underbrush from growing. And all that is remaining are just these giant, giant trees. We've got the cedars, we've got the maples, we've got the Sitka spruces. They're all, they're all here. Definitely getting the draping moss and the sunbeams coming through the forest at the low angle are making this a truly beautiful experience. So here is a great example of a nurse log with very large Sitka spruces coming out of it entrapping it and ensnaring it in roots going down into the ground and here we are starting to get our first views down valley at the peaks of the Colonel Bob wilderness so here is Wolf Bar Camp at 2.5 miles and we are going to go down and check it out So on the west side of the Olympics, the geology is a bit different than on the east side. If you remember, up on the Duckabush River, I showed you the crescent formation of pillow basalt. That is an igneous rock, and you will not find igneous rocks in this portion of the Olympics. On the western coastal side, we have all of the soft layers of sedimentary and low grade metamorphic rocks. All of these layers here were at once horizontal according to the principle of original horizontality. Sedimentary layers are laid down horizontally. They were at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean and they consist of sandstone. That's a big layer of sandstone right there. But in between you got these little thin layers of shales silt stones and slates. The slate is the metamorphic version of shale. When you take shale and put it under slight pressure, just a little bit under the earth, it will squeeze into shale. And the shale actually turns into another metamorphic rock called phyllite. And I don't see any, I've seen some pieces of phyllite laying around, but I don't see any in this exposure. And uh, this is just, you know, down here in these valleys, we have these layers that are turned vertical. And it's the same thing up in the peaks. 
on the, the western side of the range. The Olympics are composed of these giant sheets of oceanic rock that was scraped off and accretiated onto the continent as the subducting Juan de Fuca plate goes under North America. And all of this, all these softer layers are smashed up against the crescent formation in the east to make the core of the Olympic range. Very sharp, very pointy, and easily erodible. estimate we are within about a mile and a half of our destination and the trail has come down along the North Fork right here it's rather mellow in this stretch the Sun is at that perfect angle where it's shining right down in the middle of the valley We're about the noon hour right now getting close to it And just look at those views, looking downriver. We are at our destination, Elip Creek Camp, and we are going to head down to the banks of Elip Creek itself. Well, we followed Elip Creek down just a little bit from our lunch spot. And we have found the place where it intercepts and uh, flows into the North Fork. It's a pretty spectacular spot. Got some rapids. Got some unique water features. Look at that whirlpool of crystal. 
crystal clear turquoise water. Just turn around in that back eddy. It never ceases to uh, amaze me, the wonder, the enchantment, and the peacefulness of these rainforest valleys here on Washington's Olympic Peninsula. It's starting to warm up now when you're out in the sun, but it was definitely crispy and cold today in the shadows. Even though it's crystal clear, blue skies, clouds are starting to rise, and the sun is definitely past the noon hour. Uh, we have to be really careful today walking in here. A lot of slick logs, a lot of slick rocks, and just a lot of frosty sections of the trail. We have to really take our time, slow down, not go fast so you don't slip. I remember staying here at a lit creek about 10 years ago, my buddy Bruce camped in the trees behind the creek over there, pretty close to the privy. Kind of just laid out in the ferns with the tarp, spent the night, and hiked the 6.5 miles back to the car where we started from today. And I have to say, doing it today compared to 10 years ago, I don't even remember half the stuff that we saw. Some of the creeks we crossed, I remember. Um, but it was just gorgeous today. The low angle sunlight coming through the trees, eliminating the moss, the wildlife, tons of elk this morning crashing through the woods, running in front of us, scaring the Jesus out of us, you know, really knowing they're going to come out and run in front of you or behind you. So that was really cool. Lots of stuff continuing to bud. I'd say, you know, I was in the Quinault region a week ago and everything was just starting to shoot. Now there's actual leaves and tiny little flowers starting to come out on plants. Uh, especially after this next week of sunshine we're gonna get, there should be a lot more growth and foliage for sure. Compared to the east fork of the Quinault, I found that this trail just knocks right in the face with really gorgeous rainforest flats at first, moss draped maples, lots of big sick spruce right off the get go. And as we got closer to the Olympic Creek here, the valley got narrower and those big flats of alders and maple trees kind of went away. Um, but the east fork of the Cornwall definitely had better water features because it has the Pony Bridge where the Cornwall River just goes through some pretty crazy rock formations. This is close here, but nowhere as, uh, as cool, in my opinion, as what the East Fork does. So I hate judging and grading forests because they're all kind of the same ecosystem, but I would say this one has more forest features. East Fork definitely had more uh, water features this year. Got to do them both though to make it a full package. Uh, and it's just it's a good thing to do here in these April, May, spring months is come up here and hit off, check off some of these rainforest valleys. They all offer something just a little bit different. switch to this filtration system over the catadin that we've used for years. What do you think about it, Sarah? Uh, it's pretty awesome. It's actually also a catadin brand and it's super lightweight. Um, I can't remember how many ounces, but definitely under a pound for just the squeeze uh, bag, which is a full liter.
So this was the first time Sarah has hiked up a portion of the North Fork of the Quinault. And what did you think of it? Uh, it's really gorgeous. A lot of moss. Um, I mean, if I had fallen asleep and somebody dragged me in here and woke me up, I would be able to tell them in the Olympics for sure. The big rainforest has had this particular feeling. They just they have a lot of moss, a lot of undergrowth. Just kind of a certain smell. Um, the trails. Was it a flat trail coming in here? It was hiker flat. What does that mean? Um, you're going to go up and down quite a bit. You're probably not going to go up I mean, maybe 500 feet all at once. But on the map, it actually is pretty flat. It's pretty typical of a lot of these rainforest things. You can see that the elk use these trails just as much as humans do.